same, the same shot. So basically you shut, set up a camera and take this photograph several different times at different exposures. And that way, in one, of the, in one of the photos, you get really good detail in the shadow areas. Another one, you get really good detail in the, in the mid-tones. Another one, really good detail in the highlights, which you can't really get in one photograph if there's a huge difference between those. So you, t so you take those, and there's software that'll do it, and, and kind of compress it into one photo. He did this with film. <laughs> He did this with film, scanned the film, and then ran it through that process. So in, in this photo, you're getting the film grain and also the artifacts that come along with that HDR process. So that's the, that's the last photo that I have here to show you. Um. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Audrey. Uh, are there any questions for you? Someone, there are two microphones. Please walk to them and ask them to Audrey. Hello. Uh, this may be more of a question to anyone in the audience than to you, but I was at uh, Fostum in Brussels a few years back, running around with my camera like this all the time. Came to the airport, started shooting cool statues and then I saw the passport control and a sign that says no photos here. So uh, I tried to shoot some photos there. Uh, it, <laughs> it turns out, uh, th this is probably just by accident, but when I took the photos at the security control, I could see the roof clearly and then just below a certain level, everything is yellow and white. Are, are they doing something funny? <laughs> like r infrared, not ultraviolet, light against? The, because yeah. it produces a really cool effect. It's almost like that yeah, accident I, drops I like to, I would like to see that. I, I'm, I've never heard of them doing that on purpose. And a professor of mine has this series of photos that she took in airports containing those signs that say, no photography allowed here. So. Okay, so it's not everywhere. Maybe it's just my CF card in airports. <laughs> well, Thank so you. A, co a coincidence, but interesting. Please load it up and you can check if it's uh, a coincidence of, hmm? or maybe something else. If he loads it up, yeah. Um, what was that? Uploading on the internet and now you can see what it might be. Or send it to you by, in by yeah, email. Yeah, I, I would like to see that, Ooh. so send it to me. Yeah, next question. So, short of dropping your nice digital camera in a pond or trying to take a photo in an airport, which obviously works really well, do you have any pointers on abusing your camera settings for, uh, for creating these effects if you have no idea where to start? Um, I'm less familiar with working digitally than probably a lot of other people here. But what I do have to say about that is if something, happen, if something happens accidentally and you like the effect, try to do it on purpose. Try to do that again and, and um, mimic the conditions that you did it on, that you did it. Um, there's, there's some things that people have done with JPEG compression and using that on purpose. So basically just shoot a bunch of photos and Whatever you like, just try to do that again. Try to do it on purpose. Try to emphasize the things that, that you like in that. So remember really well what you did. <laughs> and if you don't, make something up. <laughs> Next uh, question. Yeah, uh, thanks, Audrey. Th uh, thanks, Audrey, for your talk. Uh, and 
I'm thinking of starting a project that you might be interested in. Because really? uh, inspired by your uh, talk, I thought it would be interesting because I'm considering myself a proletarian scientist. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it would be good to get many, many cameras. You probably have cameras at home that you don't use because they're too old or whatever. I think it would be a good idea to do a research project about destroying cameras uh, and finding out what they're doing, like bombarding them with microwaves so whatever, okay? Okay. So I think we should have like a week or something like that where we really, like really, try to beat the shit out of cameras, but, and then okay. repairing them and trying that to do like that. That sounds fun, let's do it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, really, like, like not only um, physical violence, really like bombarding them with radiation or whatever. I think there is interesting stuff in chips and we have to find it. Thanks for your yes. talk. Oh, no, oh, Thank you. wait, wait, wait. Where can they send the cameras? Because if someone's got a camera, where uh, to send it? I think it? I'll just set up a page or, uh, in, uh, or a wiki or something like that and I'll put it on, uh, on the 26C3 wiki or something. Okay, Sounds so great. look into the 26C3 wiki for Audrey's talk, okay? Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Johannes. <laughs> Next Hi. question. Great, great talk. Uh, I was wondering if I could chill here for a moment for you and ask you to describe the uh, sewing film process because I noticed you left out something that I think a lot of people here would really appreciate, which is repurposing, say, some kinds of technology that have certain, certain uh, intended yes, effects you. like killing people, <laughs> and instead you used it for art. Okay, so I used your night vision goggles <laughs> and started working on this project with you. Um, so we were, what was that? Making art instead of war. Yes. <laughs> so night vision goggles that, that are often used in wars to go and kill people, we use them instead to see in the dark and not put our fingers into the sewing machine. <laughs> so, so the Stitch Film Project, it started off with me and Jake Applebaum and our friend Mike Esty and we were using night vision goggles and a sewing machine just, and just sewing together the film and shooting it in a large fa format camera to see what would happen. So. Wow, sounds amazing. Oh, there, yeah. there are <laughs> photographs of that online, yes? Yes, there are. Um, <laughs> I'll put, them, I'll put them on the wiki for my talk. That'll be far less chaotic than me trying to make something happen here right now. Um, the, and there is actually some photographs that, that my friends uh, Ian Baker and Nicole Aptekar took of me sewing this in the dark with an infrared camera. So we set up some infrared lights. I was wearing infrared, infrared goggles, or um, night vision goggles. And I was sewing these, and they were using an infrared camera to photograph me while I did this. It was wow. a lot of fun. That's great. What's your question? Uh, I found it very interesting when you talked about uh, solarization as having been a technique, or rather, an accidental process that was occurring repeatedly to a lot of the early photographers. And it seems that there was a gap between the Daguerre photograph that you showed and the Man Ray and Lee Miller photograph of some 70 years or more, or mm -hmm. maybe even 100 years, before there was a distinct occurrence of that accidental technique being used as an intentional component of the art. And I was wondering if there was anything you could elaborate about what you think the reasons for that delay were or what it took for those artists at that time to identify mm -hmm. that flaw and re you know, reinterpret it as an intentional thing that they could use as part of their art. Mm -hmm. And as a second part of the question, where do you think those, I mean, do you think those uh, um, opportunities exist now? And if so, are there any examples that you might have or ideas or directions about that? Okay, that's a lot to answer. <laughs> But I'll, I'll try to cover all of that. Um, so yes, there, there is a time gap in between, that, in between that daguerreotype and the surrealists who were doing this in the beginning of the 20th century. So even though solarization definitely occurred in, in that time, I couldn't find any evidence of people doing it on purpose until, until the surrealists. So it was probably largely a cultural thing 
photography was more was more concerned with getting a realistic image and and doing that instead of use, instead of using those flaws. In the surrealist period, it was surreal, surrealism and Dada came around the same time, and were were described in the beginning as an anti-art movement. They were they were doing th they were doing.